excited. Today is March, and with March, I think Irish. So we've got some Irish recipes that we're going to be cooking today. Um, in case you notice, there's somebody standing next to me here. Um, he just wandered off the streets and said, can I cook with you? And I said, OK. Um, actually, this is Larry Rivlin. He is a sales rep here at Apt, and you're going to learn all about him as we're cooking today. I thought it would be fun for you guys not only to learn how to make some fun dishes, but to meet some of the fun people that work in the store here. So you'll be seeing more of that as we go through. Um, feel free to comment. Larry loves to be complimented, so <laughs> throw them all his way if you can. And I'm, he told me he told everybody he knows to tune into this, so there, I'm expecting thousands of you to be live right now watching Larry cook. So. Today we're going to be doing shepherd's pie. We're going to be focusing on the platinum range in the back. We'll talk about that as we go through this as well. And um, with that said, we're going to start cooking. So Larry is going to start by peeling and cutting some potatoes to get the potatoes on the top. Shepherd's pie, in case you aren't familiar with it, is a traditional Irish dish. Um, where it kind of comes from is people kind of cleaning out the refrigerators towards the ends of the week. So there, there are probably thousands of variations of this recipe if you look for a recipe online. All different kinds of vegetables being used. So basically it was end of the week, whatever meats they had left over, whatever vegetables they had left over, they would kind of make this stew, make their potato base on top. You can do regular, we're doing regular russet potatoes here. You can do sweet potatoes. The butter potatoes are really good as well. But he's going to get that topping going, and I'm going to go ahead and get, we're going to get this meat tenderized. And traditionally, this is made with lamb, but I understand that everybody likes lamb. So I'm actually doing a combination of beef and lamb, and that kind of tempers, tempers the flavor down a little bit. And a good way to tenderize meat, especially ground meat, if you're making kind of a quick dish, or Chinese food and things like that, when you're making your chicken and your steak, if you've ever made it at home like a traditional stir fry, and when you pull it out of the wok, it tastes very overcooked, what they do is they tenderize it with some baking soda and typically some water. They let it soak for a while, and that helps break down some of the fibers, and it makes for a very tender protein so that when you're only cooking it for a minute or two, it allows you to have super tender meat and it doesn't toughen up by putting it in the heat. So we're gonna do a pound each of ground beef and ground lamb. And to this we're gonna add a teaspoon of baking soda and a tablespoon of water. All right. You just wanna kinda of sprinkle this over all of the meat. And Larry's peeling the potatoes. Some people prefer to have the skin left on. You're welcome to do that as well. Doesn't matter. And then this is just going to get mixed. I'm going to add a little splash of water to this. And, and then I'm, we're going to let this sit for about 15 or 20 minutes. And when I make mashed potatoes at home, I actually do leave the skin on. Do you? Yep. That's where all the good stuff is, right? All the vitamins and yep. all the yummy stuff. So that's where all the healthy stuff is anyway. But some people just don't like having those crunchy bits in their potatoes. I understand that. You make this however you want to make it. All right. Now that that's all mixed in, I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. You want that to sit for about 15 or 20 minutes. So by the time we get to cook it, um, it'll be tenderized and ready to go. And then the first thing that you want to get cooking is your bacon. So I'm doing thick applewood bacon but you can do whatever kind of bacon you want. You want to do about a half a pound. And I just typically cut this right down the middle. If you don't have a super sharp knife, if you want to throw your bacon in the freezer for a little while, that will actually make it a lot easier to cut. My mom, I think, used to use scissors too. <laughs> I've done that. Whatever works. But having a really sharp knife will, will help this cut a lot easier. So Larry, how long have you been with App? I've been here now for right a little over seven years. And did you start in sales or did you start somewhere else? So actually I volunteered. I wanted to learn as I come from a completely different background from appliances. So I actually rode on the trucks and helped the delivery guys out so I could learn about the appliances and know what will fit and know what I'm doing when I made it to sales. Oh, cool. So I did that a couple days a week when I was still in my previous career. And then, uh, 
one day, the boss said, hey, you're hitting the floor tomorrow. <laughs> and it happened to be Memorial Surprise. Day, my first day in sales on the floor, which is one of the biggest days of the year. And uh, <laughs> I've been here since. I had a lot of fun, actually, having a lot of fun. You met some good friends here too, right? Oh my God, you know, starting here, I made new lifetime friends. That's awesome. At Apt. That is awesome. You guys do a lot of fun stuff here to dress up for Halloween and I get to get on TV and cook. And Santa Claus. And <laughs> All right. And then when you're done with that one and you get the water on, I'm going to have you start cooking this bacon. For sure. While I get these cut up. So here at Apt in the showroom, we have a really good representation of product, especially back here behind the fountain. We've got rain shops, cooktops, ranges, ventilation, refrigeration. We've got our platinum 60 inch range back here, as well as electric wall ovens. We will be getting dual fuel, hopefully in here by the end of the month sometime, maybe into next month. Um, so we can get that on the floor and get people looking at that. We passed all of our pilot testing as of today. So we are officially in production. So we're super excited about that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention before I forget is anybody that's tuning in live or is watching this after the fact, we have a special promotion for Apt. All of the sales reps are familiar with it, but you can, if you purchase a Blue Star appliance and you want to do some fun colored knobs, we will comp those knobs for you so you can get a set of free colored knobs with your range. Uh, so when you come in, just ask the ask Apt sales rep for that and he will take care of you. All right, I'm going to clean this up. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is get two onions and two carrots, kind of a small dice. I'll do the carrots and then the onions. And you really kinda of wanna have all of your veggies the same size so that they cook evenly. And I talk about this all the time when you're cutting on a cutting board. You always, if you have something round like a potato or like a carrot, rather than take the chance of cutting yourself, if you cut a little sliver off the bottom, then this sits flat, and that allows you then to cut your planks. And then these will get cut from here. So then the bacon's going to go in the La Crusade back here with a little bit of olive oil, and we're going to get that semi-crisp, and then that, we'll pull that out and it'll get added back in towards the end after we get most of the sauce done. So this is kind of a just a stew on the bottom and mashed potatoes on top. So Larry, do you have a favorite Blue Star appliance? My favorite Blue Star appliance is definitely gonna be any one of the sliding ranges with yeah. the open burners, of course. Why is that? First of all, even though it's a uh, commercial uh, residential appliance, you can use it a commercial application. These things are built like tanks. You can Definitely. You, you, the power burners, the uh, CFMs, uh, the, I'm sorry, the BTUs they put out, it's pretty spectacular. And when we come, when we go in the back to cook uh, in a few minutes, we're going to give you a peek at the power burner inside the range. So the Platinum Series back here is the only one that has the power burner. and. It, that makes it a true convection oven. So what that does is there's a large heat element behind the fan and that will actually force hot air into the cavity. So your preheat times are very quick. You get very even baking and um, that oven will preheat to 350 in about seven and a half minutes. So it's um, really quick. We have our oven preheated to 375 for this dish. And everything is cooked when you put it in the oven, so really we're just kind of putting it in there to, to brown the potatoes. And as you're baking, if it's, not, if it's not to your like, you can always just throw it under the broiler as well. Okay. We also have here at Apt, we have a couple of drawers um, in, the, in the island section here where we have our cooktops and our range tops, and it displays all 190 of the REL colors. So 
our product can be, is fully customizable, whether that's with color um, on the knobs or on the range itself or with trim upgrades. So we've got 10 different trim options and up to a thousand different colors because we've got a matte finish on some of our colors and um, some textured finishes as well. And then when you're cutting up onions, if you cut the one, the one end off and you cut this in half and peel it, this is one of my favorite things I actually learned in culinary school is how to cut an onion. And I literally went home and cut hundreds of onions and carrots and potatoes practicing for tests because they would test your knife skills. They would give you, um, they would put all kinds of ingredients in different bowls and not tell you what anything is. And you had to look at probably a hundred different bowls and try and figure out what spices were what and what herbs were what and what. And it's not as easy as you would think it would be. <laughs> So we're going to peel these. How's that bacon coming back there? It's smelling really good. <laughs> it's funny, nobody is. Usually when we're back here cooking regular food, because App does cookies on the weekends, on Saturdays and Sundays all day, and they bake them out of our ovens. So you know that these ovens are getting workout, and they're, they bake beautiful cookies week after week after week without any issues, service issues, or anything like that. However, when we're here on Wednesdays, people come back and they're like, where's the cookies? <laughs> How many different so, colors can you get these uh, appliances A thousand. A thousand? A thousand. Um, so then when you have your onion, you want to put your hand on here to actually make it um, so that it stays on your board. And you're going to cut, depending on how big you want your onions, you're going to cut either very small, medium, or large slices. And you want to go just to about here. You don't want it to go all the way through the onion. And then you're going to turn it towards you, it's a little bit of skin there, and then you actually do this, and you don't go all the way through again, and about the same width apart, and then when you turn it this way, you've got your dice already, so it's all ready to go. And it takes a little practice, and you always want to keep your, your, your fingers turned under so that as you're cutting, this is not only a guide, but it keeps you from cutting your fingertip off. fan is pretty spectacular putting that out of the air the smoke out of there <laughs> so that's one of our custom hoods we have a lot of standard hoods um, that you can choose from but you also there are also complete customization so if you want to have strapping different than what you see back there you can do that if you want to have rivets in a different area or you know less more etc we've got them all over the showroom um, but we've got very affordable hoods, and our 30 and 36 inches come with a 600 CFM fam, fan already, so you're not paying separate for your fan. It's all built into the price, which is nice. Okay. One more. So I mentioned this is going to be our Irish month, so on the 15th, we're actually going to be doing probably one of my all-time favorite meals, uh, corned beef hash. So we'll teach you how to do some breakfast for dinner in two weeks. I love corned beef hash. Yeah? Love it. Awesome. I love when they make it from scratch too. Like those big chunks of corned beef in it. Okay. How are we looking on that bacon? We're ready to roll. All right. All right, I think I'm going to have you come back around because I think the rest of what we're doing is going to be back here. All right. Oh, done. Perfect. Yeah, your turn. Oh, <laughs> see? 
we're going to cook this just until it gets kind of crispy. They were kind enough in, in the gourmet shop to gift us one of these La Crusades. So if you like these, you can purchase them in the gourmet shop. This Rebecca gave one of these to me. And the brown, you want to have, it's nice to have that brown bits on the bottom because that's where all your flavor is. So then when you add your liquid and you deglaze your pan, it's going to pull all of that good stuff up and put it right into the flavor right into your sauce. So these are the open burners and I don't know if you can see, but this is a 22,000 and then we've got a 25,000 over here. So really high heat, really efficient cooking, really good coverage on the bottom of the pot. And then it also goes down to a very nice low simmer. The other thing we have back here is our small pot simmer. So open burner again, but the ports are concentrated in the middle of the star so that when you cook on there, if you have a small pot to melt butter or you have a sauce that's very delicate or soup that you want to simmer all day, you're actually going to put it back there and you're going to have that nice low flame. So your low, low, low simmer is going to be always be on that back left. You guys get a lot of training here, huh, Larry? That's the greatest thing about APT is every sales associate is going to be very, very knowledgeable about everything they're selling. Because it's got to be, it's got to be a lot. I used to work for another company that where I cooked on a lot of different brands, but to understand all the nuances and how a, an appliance performs and attaching that to like how people cook in their home really, I think, is a gift. And being a, being well trained on that. I feel like that helps enable you really to get people into the appliances that they're meant to be, not something that you think they should be in, right? And that's the magic of apps. It's also fortunate to have people like yourself in the store on a daily basis that if I don't know the answer, I could ask and find out. Fine. That's awesome. And I feel sometimes when you cook on an appliance that a lot of times that goes further than sometimes knowing what the BTU is, right? Because then you talk about, I made this, I made this, it was really cool. I did potatoes, they boiled pretty quickly. I made bacon, you know, we do pizzas in the oven. We have to do pizza sometime soon. Haven't done pizza in a while. And then also I get to take these recipes home, make them for my family and it gets pretty spoiled as well. <laughs> and the recipes do get posted once the video is finished. Uh, the, they get posted and then there is a blog uh, that will actually post the recipe as well. And again, these, these are a good base, but I encourage you to have fun with them and, you know, use different toppings, different seasonings, different veggies and all of that and make it your own. All right, how much time do we have left on this timer? Five minutes. Five minutes, all right. We're getting there. We are getting there. Another couple minutes on the bacon and then we'll get everything else going. Get everything else added. Good. Does it matter in what order you start adding the vegetables? Well, on this one, because we're doing fresh carrots and we're doing frozen peas, um, we want to cook the carrots with the onions because they're the same size. They're going to cook in about the same amount of time. Um, if, you, if you're cutting the carrots larger and you want bigger chunks and you want to start those ahead of the onions. So whatever's the biggest is going to take the longest to cook is what you want to put in first. Things like mushrooms, if you add mushrooms, they put out a lot of water. So those have got to cook for a while before they completely release all their moisture and actually start to caramelize and get brown. So mushrooms um, are one thing that always needs to get started kind of first. Oh, I'd be surprised because whenever I make them, it feels like they get done so quickly. Yeah. Yeah, once the, once the water is drawn out of them, then they, um, then they cook pretty quickly. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull out this bacon. And 
And it, you don't want it to be super, super crispy. It's gonna continue cooking in the sauce. We really want it here more for flavor than texture. So as long as it's, you've got most of that fat rendered down so you can cook your veggies, then you're good to go. And this is something I added to the recipe. I don't know that this is something traditional to shepherd's pie, but I wanted to get, add some of that smokiness in there. And then we've got all these gorgeous brown bits on the bottom. So once I add these vegetables, love that sound. And then as the vegetables release their liquid, it's gonna start pulling up anything that's in the bottom of the pan here. Do you cook a lot at home, Larry? I cook a real lot at home, yes. Do you have a specialty? I don't have no, a specialty. That's a no. He's like, I do everything perfect. I, <laughs> I, make, I make everything, and I have a lot of fun with it. Yeah? I'll go on uh, some of my favorite recipe websites and something that might appeal to me. I'll go to the ingredients and I'll uh, look it up. Do you grill a lot? I grill. Um, I, I use my smoker quite a bit, too. Oh, nice. Yeah. I just made uh, several slabs of ribs and um, even a, a whole turkey tenderloin on it the other day it was pretty pretty solid. Oh nice. That's next on my list as a smoker. I'm not a big grill person. I have a beautiful grill at home but I just don't use it enough. One of my I, don't, I think because make. I don't eat a lot of steak and stuff like uh, that I don't use the grill as much and sometimes I think it's easier just to do it at home inside. A lot of other things <laughs> in the grill though even salmon on the grill is pretty, yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah I like doing them on those planks. Uh, cedar planks? Yeah or? yeah. Still not boiling? All right. So you wanna cook these for about three or four minutes. You want them to start kind of getting tender and start to get a little brown. Clean up some of this over here. And stick in there too. You can tell the onions are starting to get a little translucent, so we're getting there. It's another minute or two, and then we'll go ahead and get the rest of these ingredients added. And then we do have one in the oven, so we can pull that out when it's ready, and you guys will be able to see what it looks like finished. And then to this, we're gonna go ahead and add two to three cloves of garlic. And then you're just gonna cook this until it's kind of fragrant, which is maybe a minute or so. And then the last couple of things we have here, we've got um, a cup of red wine, we've got a cup and a half of beef stock, and then I've got a mix of dried parsley, fresh thyme, dried oregano, and some salt. So those are your seasonings that'll get added. We've got a little bit of tomato paste. So this adds a little bit, a little touch of acid and it also helps to thicken the sauce. And then we've got some um, frozen peas that we're gonna, we're gonna throw in as well. So that is our timer. Grab some towels. Oh, it bubbled over quite a bit. <laughs> so that coming. We learned the hard way the first time that we made a little too much. That's it. Just like a cooking shows in the morning, the magic of TV, and voila, it's done. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the red wine in here. And you want about half of that to evaporate. So 
And then the wine is gonna help deglaze the bottom of the pan as well. So all of that brown bits that you saw on the bottom are now pulled up into your, into your mix of vegetables. Okay. Well, that's simmering. I'm gonna go ahead and chop some chives. Set the timer already. Pardon? Okay. And then um, if you wanna grab like your sour cream and, mm -hmm. so we're gonna add sour cream to this. We're gonna add some Parmesan cheese, a little salt, and we'll half and half. All right, get some chives cut real quick. And I did pre-measure this, so it's ready to roll. So he's a pro. So these are just some fresh chives to put on top of your casserole when it comes out of the oven, your shepherd's pie, to make it look pretty. I'm just going to sprinkle these on top. That's pretty cool. It looks fantastic. really hot. <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right. So your potatoes are going to simmer for about 10 minutes until they're fork tender. This is why you put a sheet tray underneath. Because <laughs> if it spills over, <laughs> then you're covered. And then Larry said he's doing all the dishes after we're done. Doing so the dishes. I'm just going to go sit in my car when we're done. <laughs> Do you have another glass of that red wine? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then have you got your potato masher and everything? Probably be needing that. And in case you need to spread and butter. All right. Did you say hi to all your fans online? <laughs> all the people you told to tune in? Uh, they'll be making fun <laughs> of me later. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, probably have 20 texts right now. When am I cooking dinner for them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So every Monday I do have my whole entire family over at my house and I always cook something new and creative every every oh, week and something fun. How many people do you cook for? And it could be anywhere from uh, 7 to 14. It all wow. depends on who's in town, what kids are away, what kids are in town, you know. Oh, fun. That's nice. Every Monday, that's like the Italian Sunday dinner, right? Exactly. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Dinner, I mean, sitting down and eating is what brings people together, right? I mean, so many people come together over food, whether it's at home or it's at a restaurant. Um, 100% agree. It's a good, you know, good place to sit down and get everybody back together. And yeah. Usually by uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm on the computer looking at the recipe website, seeing what I didn't make yet or what's new and fun. Do you and have a over here favorite find, dish to make? Actually, it is. So my, my wife spent some time in Chile. Oh, so nice. I had the opportunity to go with her to uh, Santiago, and I found uh, empanada. So I was walking around all day long with at least an empanada in each hand all day long. <laughs> then when I came back here, I went to different restaurants, and I found I couldn't find any as good as I had That's down good, there. Yeah. So I found my own recipe, and now I make my own homemade empanada. Oh, wonderful. Kitchen's a crime scene afterward. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of filling do you use? Oh, uh, beef. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. All right, so this is reduced about halfway, so I'm going to go ahead and add in the flour. And this will just help thicken it up a little bit. And then all of my seasonings will help kind of toast the, toast the dried herbs a little bit. And then you can almost see that immediately it's getting, it's thickening up already because it's basically like you're making a roux. You've got that wine in there, so you see it's getting thicker. That's what you want. So you're gonna cook that for about a minute or so to make sure that you cook all that flour out so you don't get that gritty taste. How are your potatoes doing? Two minutes ago, 
Two minute We're almost warning. done. Hang in there, guys. <laughs> this is a this is a long one. I apologize, but it'd be well worth it. I cannot wait to try it. Anything with potatoes in my book is delicious. All right. Now we're going to add three tablespoons of tomato paste. And I like these, I like these tubes of tomato paste because then I don't have to open a can of tomato paste and cover it or put it into another container. You just use what you need. They last for a very long time. You just keep them in the refrigerator. Just kind of let the tomato paste cook for a minute or two and it kind of gets deeper in color. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and add in our beef stock and our bacon. And our peas. Okay, get that all stirred in. And because this is kind of already thickening up, we just want to cook this for a couple minutes to get the peas cooked through and get them kind of warmed up and let this thicken up just a little bit. Okay. I think Larry's about ready to finish up some potatoes over here. Are you ready so I don't burn my hands like I usually do when I cook? Do you want me to? No, I got it. I got it. <laughs> I got this. Your chef's hands don't are the old scared. Kale stop. No, I'm actually not bad. And yeah. knock on wood, I haven't cut my, hand, cut my fingers in a very, very, very long time. And I find that you cut yourself when you're not paying attention or when you have a dull knife. So just pay attention and get your knife sharpened. Dull knife for sure. Yep, we're, the timer. we're good. So on our electric wall oven, we have two separate timers, which is nice. Um, it allows you to set timers for different things, um, but you've got one for the upper and one for the lower oven. And I encourage people all the time to set timers. I always joke that I forget everything, and I would if I didn't set timers. Even my tea in the morning for three minutes, <laughs> I set a timer. Because I go and I start doing something around the house and I forget about it, and then I've got really bitter green tea. <laughs> And then we're not gonna fill the other one as much because I don't have another sheet tray. Oh, we might have a sheet tray out here. I'm gonna go take a walk for a second, see if I can find one of our sheet trays. Can I start adding the ingredients for the uh, mesh? Yes, why don't you talk through what you're cool. adding? So I already measured this out. For the recipe, we're gonna add the butter first. I'm gonna get that melting inside there. Then we're going to add Parmesan cheese. Already grated it. I thought being on TV, someone would actually do this for me, but no, I do it myself. A little bit of cream. And then finally, where did I put it? Here we go, the sour cream. And sour cream just gives it a really nice acidity, kind of a, like a tang. If you don't like sour cream, you can leave it out. Now, of course, you're gonna mash them. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and scoop this into our pan here. Hearty dish. It is for sure. And I'm 
move this over here so it's free when you're ready to do the potatoes. Thank you. Got the last bit of the butter melted here. Dollops, right? Yep. Did you taste for seasoning? Ooh, Always call. taste your potatoes for seasoning. That's why you're here. <laughs> There's a, should be a spoon in the drawer oh, here. I got the salt. I didn't even have the salt yet. I oh, almost forgot see? the salt. I was going heart healthy, but flavor poor. <laughs> Here's a spoon with, once you get it mixed in. Oh, fell for that one. <laughs> Especially potatoes, because potatoes need a lot of help. I'll give it a try, please. Oh. Good? A little uh, little more half and half. A more it's half a little and thick. Half. And we just add a little more half and half and then you're good to go. It's like a little splash. Perfect. And then I would give a little more salt. Typically if I add cream, I add a little more salt too. <laughs> Yep, Good. and then we go ahead and plop it on. You can get fancy with this if you want to put it in a pastry bag and actually pipe it with a tip right. if you want to get really fancy. But this is such a rustic dish, I feel like this is good put it on there, kind of spread it around, and then we'll get it right into a 375 degree oven for about a half an hour. You made it look so much easier, by the way. <laughs> Just get, I would get all the potatoes on there and then, um, and then spread it. Kind of dollops all around. to have somebody else to cook with. <laughs> Are you a perfectionist, Chef? No, I'm not. No? Well, it depends. <laughs> and then this sheet tray, go this is really hot, so. Um, this sheet tray is your full-size catering sheet tray or full-size sheet tray. And these sheet trays will fit in any one of our ovens, our 30 degree, or sorry, 30 inch ovens or larger. This will fit right in here. Yeah. Okay. So that's everything, guys. This is your finished product. Uh, you put some fresh chives on it when it's done. Um, I can give you a little peek in here to see what kind of it gets nice and thick on the bottom. And then you got your potatoes on top. So you're getting your meat, your veggies, and your potatoes all in one <laughs> meal. So I hope you guys will try this. I hope you throw Larry some love on our comments here. I appreciate you helping me. It appreciate was fun to cook with you. We will be back on the 15th of this month doing corned beef hash. So we hope you guys will tune back in. And please come to Apt and check out the showroom. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. All right, let's see if I can invite you back again, though. <laughs> <laughs>